Maybe you've ever asked yourself why people who are lost in life find it hard to form a relationship with another person. That's why today we are going to analyze the movie Taxi Driver, which gives a surprisingly good picture of men's problems, how difficult it is to rebound and what closing oneself in solitude and contemplating one's own frustration can lead to. The following episode contains spoilers from Taxi Driver. The movie presents a dark, almost hypnotic vision of 1970s New York and introduces Travis, an insomniac taxi driver slowly lapsing into madness and desperation. Travis has never found his place in society after returning from the Vietnam War. He is a social outcast, suffering from his loneliness and unfulfilled ambitions and unable to form a relationship with women. At the same time, driving at night through the city's worst neighborhoods, he picks up drug addicts, prostitutes and their clients and a whole range of urban pathology. He perceives New York as a degraded city that, as he puts it, needs to be cleaned of vermin. All this causes disgust, contempt, hatred and a desire for someone to do something about it. It is worth pointing out that despite his apparent job as a taxi driver, he has no meaning in life. He is like a ship without a captain. That ship is, of course, his taxi, which is actually going nowhere. This is also our first clue that maybe he was lying about the Vietnam War. A certain goal is inherent in every soldier's identity, that's why there are ranks and a strong hierarchy in the army. Everyone has a goal, listens to whoever is above them. Maybe his life has been ruined by the fact that he has just lost a superior who always set him a goal and now he has no corporal or captain to tell him what to do. A similar situation happens after graduating. School is about following orders, but when you leave school you can experience this effect of not having a goal because no one will set it for you anymore. All your life you had a captain, whether it was your parents or your teacher at school and now you have to become a captain yourself. Issues like trying to make a doctor's appointment are very challenging for young people. It can be extremely stressful for a young person who has never made independent decisions before. Going back to Travis and his emptiness. He doesn't know where he is going and observing the world from his lonely boat, a taxi, doesn't help him at all. Even though he has contact with people getting in and out of the car all the time, he is actually alone. It can also be a good metaphor for life. Despite being among people all the time, you can actually be lonely. In the movie, we also see Travis' diary entries and his letters to his family. They are written in a simple, almost childish style. Our taxi driver does not know how to put his thoughts on paper. So many of his entries are empty, almost devoid of content. At the same time, when he does tell his family how he is doing, he gives them a completely false picture of his life. He presents himself as happy and fulfilled. He is clearly ashamed of his everyday life and prefers to lie. Believe it or not, this is a very common phenomenon. Telling loved ones the truth could only help him. By lying, he only buries himself in this bad situation. The proverb, the truth will set us free, is good. But the truth will lift the burden of life from us fits even better, because if he told his family what his situation is, maybe they would try to help him. Instead, he remains alone with everything. He buries himself in lies, hoping that some miracle will happen, and all will fly from Hogwarts and his life will change overnight. But such things happen very rarely on their own. Many people strongly believe that if they run away from their problems, they will solve themselves and better times will come. Travis is fascinated with a beautiful blonde, and now we are going to trace his behavior. At first, he watches and stalks her. She notices this and later her friend chases him away. Later, Travis gets the courage and asks her out. She agrees just out of curiosity and desire to get away from her boring job. At the meeting, Betsy notices that Travis is actually uncivilized and almost animalistic. They don't have much to talk about. Their relationship quickly ends when he invites her to the cinema for a pornographic movie. This is a perfect example of how difficult it is for a man of low social status to connect with a woman when he has nothing to offer and does not represent any of the values a woman might desire. Travis is also simply aiming too high, based on his own delusion that this is what he simply deserves from life. And there's nothing wrong with high ambitions, but only if you also put in a lot of work. 
If you can't clean your own room and you spend your free time watching pornography, then while hitting on a beautiful, educated woman, you must take into account that your lives are radically different and you won't be able to form any relationship. The main character is not consistent at all. What we hear from him is exactly what he doesn't do by himself. As Betsy aptly describes him, Travis is a walking contradiction. On the one hand, he judges New York as degraded, vulgar, rotten city, but he regularly goes to pornographic cinemas. He speaks loudly about the need to eat well and to take care of his body, at the same time eating mainly junk food, sweets and adding alcohol to his breakfast. He also takes pills all the time. Travis aims very high, he would like to do something great and become a hero for someone. He has visions of cleansing the whole city of vermin and filth, but at the same time, he cannot clean his own flat. He lives on rubbish and clearly does not understand his own life. He looks for the sources of his problems only outside, without paying attention to the fact that perhaps he could solve many of them by fixing small issues in his own everyday life. Let's look at this dialogue when he seeks help from his buddy. I got... It's just that I got a... I got a... And it shows well how he cries out for help, wants to open up, but cannot do this. What he gets in return is a piece of advice. I envy you your youth. Go on, get laid, get drunk, do anything. Travis has no support from anyone, and it's a bit of a problem. Because if a man tries several times to get the courage and each time he hears advice like go out to people, go get laid, then he won't eventually try to look for help anymore. He'll understand that people can't help him. It often happens that people are on the verge of a breakdown but no one pays attention to it because it is much easier to look away, start doing something or give some useless advice than to actually help someone. Travis also spends a lot of his free time watching TV. He mostly watches ordinary scenes from life, soap operas or dancing. On the one hand, this shows a longing for normality, everyday activities, relationships and family. Travis thinks about things he cannot get, which only intensifies his frustration and pushes him further into depressive states. But at the same time, one may conclude that he creates his vision of how life should look like based on the idealized image seen in the media and TV programs. When he drives the taxi, he observes people and struggles with his thoughts, feeling both contempt and envy. People enjoy closeness and intimacy, while for him those feelings are strange and inaccessible. The relationship between Travis and Iris, an underage prostitute, is also an important threat. The taxi driver tries to help her return to a normal life. Again, he sees himself as a hero who comes to the lady's rescue, but again, his simple notions collide with a complex reality. It turns out that the 12-year-old does not want help at all. She justifies the violence she suffers at the hands of her pimp and argues that her life, consisting mostly of sex and drugs, suits her perfectly. It shows that pulling people out of their problems is very often not as easy as it may seem and often requires a change that has to take place in themselves, not only in their environment. Not without significance is the ending of the film in which the master plan ends up completely different than Travis imagined. It is another clash of personal imagination and a much more complex reality. What's also interesting about this is that ultimately the media portrays the whole event very different than it really happened, just to make a story that sells well. Even though Travis is an outright anti-hero, a mentally unbalanced aggressor, the media turns him into a hero, someone he always wanted to be, but couldn't become. As it often happens in the real world, it's the catchy headline that matters, not the actual events. People like Travis are nothing rare, we pass people lost in their own lives on the street every day. But Taxi Driver gives us some serious lessons that exemplify why you can't find a girlfriend as in this episode's title. Firstly, be consistent with what you say. If you say you can't stand filth, then it would be a good idea to take care of the appearance of your own life. Or if you despise people who drink alcohol or take drugs, then you should not do that either, not to lose your self-respect. Secondly, have a purpose in life. Even the best ship without a captain will wander on the ocean. You need to participate and think about your own project called you. Thirdly, 
Travis can't get out of his yellow box and just observes people. This gives us a clue that maybe observation is a valuable experience, but we can't just observe life forever, we have to take an active part in it. Fourthly, if you realize that women see you not as a human being but rather as an unsocialized wild animal, then you need to go back to the previous three points. Instead of focusing on the dirty streets, focus on the dirt in your life. Find a purpose and stop immersing yourself in fantasies and observations. You need to become something more human. Stop watching pornography and hoping that life will clean itself up. We appreciate you guys spending time with us here, so please go ahead and watch our other videos. Oh, and ring that notification bell so you're the first one to get the new ones.